Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Creative Herd Studios Fun Facts Artist Series. Today, we're going to talk about Francisco Goya. This is an artist that has a little bit of a dark side to him. He's been through a lot, and you can see that through his artwork. So it's going to be pretty cool. Let's take a look. Goya was born in Spain in 1746. He began art studies at the early age of 14 under the painter Jose Luzon. One of the cool things about Goya, for his time anyway, was that he liked to do realism, but in a different way. He started to bring a very realistic element to it, not only with making it look real, but giving it a sense of realism and natural poses and actual life type things in his pictures. And that was kind of new for the time. He was deaf most of his life. In 1793, some kind of disease or some kind of incident that caused him to lose his hearing. His life changed with this deafness. Now, this is the time period that his life becomes more interesting, the kind of things that we're going to want to learn about. In 1796, he supposedly had an affair with a noblewoman, and she was the Duchess of Alba. He used her as a subject matter in quite a few of his paintings. You'll see paintings of her in this podcast. You can see the Black Duchess. In the portrait of the Duchess of Alba, the word solo was found by his name. And that suggests that she was his only love that he had. And that's where a lot of the speculation comes from him having an affair with this noble woman. When he painted her, he didn't give her the painting, but rather kept it. Historians believe that she didn't want it because he spoke about their affair publicly. All right, so we're fast forwarding to 1799. During this time, he completed 80 allegorical etchings, and these were called the caprichos. And these etchings would show different things like witches and ghosts and fantastical creatures that would invade the mind, especially during dreams. Um, they symbolized... Uh, a world against reason. It was uh, very nightmarish visions that he put in these artwork. They were considered dark and angry images. So Goya believed that art could change the world. And really, I agree with him there. Art can change the world. It makes us look at things that maybe we wouldn't have seen in the eyes of the artist. And his paintings about the 1808 war between Spain and France were in response to the war not being necessary. And he used his paintings to confront people about that. And we can see that in the 3rd of May. All right, now let's get to the black period. This is what people call the period of artwork that he made when he finally, he isolated himself from the rest of the people. He moved back to his home country he went and retreated to his country home, which was called La Quinta del Sordo or the deaf man's house. He painted directly on the walls. So imagine it kind of like being an artist hermit and you don't want to face the world and you're inside the house, but you're a painter. That's what you do. You make art. And that's what he did. So his walls sort of became like his journal entries. It's how he saw the world around him or, or what he did to cope through those times. He was dealing with a lot of depression. So this black period is actually some of my favorite paintings because there's a lot of emotion and stuff pumped into these paintings. We can look at this stuff and, and see what's going on with him. They're often very dark. They're often very dramatic. And the quality is not very good either. And that's because he's just painting on the walls. He's not painting on canvases. He's not painting these with any intention to preserve them. He's just creating while isolating himself. What's interesting to think about too, because of that, these paintings were not originally titled. They were never sold. They weren't commissioned. Most artists would do artworks that were usually commissioned, meaning somebody would pay them to create a certain artwork. And usually it was, you know, their portrait or their family's portrait, something like that. These were solely for him in that house. And the paintings became named later by historians. So who knows if they even got the idea right or what was going on in his head. Nobody really knows what was going on in his head during that time. And that's kind of cool, too. So you have these paintings on the walls. How do we see them now? So what happened is decades later, after he had died, a banker had them literally removed off the walls of his home. And it's described by some as being hacked off the walls and attached to canvases. They were very damaged. They had to get a lot of restoration. 
and the paintings are considered a crude facsimile of his work. So again, that just shows that the work was for him and not for anybody else. One of his paintings in particular, and probably my favorite of Goya's paintings, is Saturn devouring his son. This could represent Goya's loss of control in his life. He is losing his ability for his normal senses. He can't hear things anymore. Um, I believe even his eyesight started to get bad towards the end. So he's losing control of everything around him. And they really think that the painting symbolizes that. We don't really know. This is all speculation because, I mean, he didn't even name his paintings. He didn't display them. He didn't talk about those paintings to other people. They were just kind of discovered in his home. After the Black Period, he left Spain and he ended up retiring in a French city called Bordeaux. There's some speculation about who he was traveling with. He had a young lady friend with him. Maybe it was his lover. Maybe it wasn't. We're not really sure. But he did end up having a stroke, which paralyzed him on his right side. That's oftentimes what strokes do. He had poor eyesight. He didn't have access to his painting materials. And he ended up dying there. The last, of course, even interesting in death, when they decided that they were going to move his body over to... Spain, his skull was missing from his body, and there's this infamous message back where the people in Madrid told them, you know, they were like, hey, you know, we have his body, but we don't have his head. And they said, send Goya with or without head. So even in death, he had some interesting parts of his lifestyle. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast on Francisco Goya. Uh, it's always neat to see the dark side of the artists and see what kinds of crazy things are going on in their heads. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you next time. <laughs>